very much for taking Master Sinus. Good evening, everyone. Tonight is a very special night. Uh, actually, it's a, a, a historic night because we are having the inaugural or annual lecture series sponsored by the medical missionaries for social responsibility. Uh, in partnership, of course, with the uh, Medical Student Council. Uh, we are all excited to, to listen to our distinguished speakers. And at this juncture, we'd like to thank in advance Dr. Carlo Castillo and our very own future MD, Dr. Sergey Aplan, for accepting the, graciously accepting the invitation to speak. Today, uh, tonight's topic is uh, interesting and powerful. The numerical number one may seem to be insignificant in volume, but I can recall a lot of instances where uh, individuals, through their efforts, have changed the course of history, uh, sometimes for bad, but most of the time for good. So, uh, on behalf of the of our beloved dean, Dr. Maris Mendoza, and the faculty and staff of the College of Medicine, thank you all for coming and uh, good evening to everyone. from the University of the Philippines and he, uh, he finished the course as a physical therapist. So he is also a chairperson of the College of Allied Medical Professions Student Council and a chairperson of the GIST UPM. He is none other than John Sir J. J. Aknan. Hello. So, uh, can everybody hear me? Uh, so, um, again, uh, to reintroduce myself, I am Sir Jacqueline. I am from the AUP College of Medicine. I am currently in third year, year level three of the Doctor of Medicine program. So, today I will be speaking about uh, uh, social, about being a social mobilizer. So, this is, this this talk of mine is entitled uh, "Pass On." So before I uh, would like to start, yeah, I, I would just like to ask the question, what are you most passionate about? Can I hear uh, uh, someone from the audience? What are you most passionate about? Can I hear from the, the freshman class of the, of the College of Medicine? Is it saying Just one word, are you passionate? Uh, like, okay, for example, for me, I'm passionate about music. I'm passionate in helping others. I'm passionate, I'm passionate in uh, studying. The joke lang. <laughs> so, Tito, ano, what, is your, what are you most passionate about? Ikaw, yes, yeah. What are you most passionate about? Just, just say one word. 
Oh yeah, Pwede, very good. Our friend here is passionate about medicine, di ba? Sinong hindi? Kasi pag hindi ka passionate sa medicine, ba't ka nandito? Di ba? So ayan, so uh, let me share a, a few, uh, a few, uh, few friends of mine na nagkaroon sila ng, ano, ng parang passionate, uh, they, they were passionate about some things and eventually they, they, they were able to translate this passion into action by being selfless and they managed to establish organizations or programs that help others. So let me start with uh, one of my favorites. Uh, this is the One Million Lights Philippines. So in One Million Lights Philippines, they provide lights, as, as, their, as their name uh, states, they provide lights to communities that don't have lights. Like for example, in a uh, remote island, meron mga isla sa Pilipinas na kapag gabi, tumitigil na yung buhay nila at 6 p.m. And then, wala na silang ilaw. So imagine that, um, as med students, will you be able to study if you sleep at 6 p.m.? Wala nang ilaw, hindi tayo makapag-aral. Well, One Million Lights Philippines tend to, uh, has this goal to provide lights uh, to every household in the Philippines. So, ayan. This is, this is ito yung founder nila, si Mark, he's my friend. Uh, they, they were able to give uh, uh, solar-powered lights. Usually, sinasabit lang nila sa taas ng mga kubo nila or yung mga barong-barong nila. And then, at night, they were able to give lights. So, so at night, their children are able to study for school. Um, it changed their life uh, dramatically since now they can have a light uh, during at night. So the uh, tendency is they became more productive. Next is give a bag of hope. Sino dito na karega sa Converges? Converges is a BPO. Diba? Alam ba natin BPO? Parang uh, ano yan? Call, center? call center. So who would have thought that uh, that a, a call center na akala natin business oriented sila, they could also be uh, charity charity minded, charity oriented. So they were able to give uh, bags. Usually they, they they engage their employees. So ito nakalagay yung participants employees nila. They engage their employees to donate in their uh, donate in their advocacies. And they were able to give bags to elementary schools. So ayan, these are the bags, and this is what inside. Ito yung laman ng bag nila. Next is the yellow boat of hope. Again, here in the Philippines, we, have, we, we live in a country full of islands. And sometimes these islands don't have access to the main islands. So some of the children are not able to go to school. So, yellow boat of hope um, managed to uh, gain funds from, from those who are willing to help and they bought this yellow boat. Bakat yellow boat? Bakat yellow boat? Pattern after the yellow school bus, so that the children may be able to go to school on the other island. And one more thing, one more thing, this boat is used by the fishermen for their livelihood. So hindi lang nila natulungan yung mga bata, natulungan pa nila yung mga mga daddies, mga mga matatanda, to get, to get their livelihood. So ayan, so naging sustainable yung project. And to date, napakadami ng yellow boat of hope in our country. The Philippine Toy Library. Have you heard of the Philippine Toy Library? Not yet. The Philippine Toy Library was founded on the premise that we want to remove the street children from the streets. Their tendency kasi is to play on the streets just because they could not afford to buy their own toys. So that is why the Philippine Toy Library, they managed to pull the toys. For example, dito, maglalagay tayo ng toys dyan. And then we invite the street kids to play here instead. So ano yung catch nun? Yung parents nila, sila yung magiging magbabantay. Yun ay entrance fee ng mga bata dun sa Philippine Toy Library. Like for example, I'm a street kid, I want to play, uh, yung schedule ko is 8 to 10. So yung mom ko, magbabantay sa, magbab siya, para siya yung daycare center directress. Ganyan. Siya yung magbabantay ng 8 to 10. Yun yung duty nila. So in, the, in this advocacy, they utilize the community because they make community cooperation with the moms. And they also remove the street kids from the streets. And finally, they were able to uh, play with toys that are actually toys, but not, not the trash that they, can, that they can find in the streets. And one more thing, sa Philippine Toy Library, bawal yung baril-barilan, 
bawal yung mga violent toys. Siyempre, kasi we want to encourage education, educational toys. So ayan, yun na yung mga, uh, some, of my, some of the advocacies of my friends uh, na nakaka-inspire talaga. Sila, malalaki na sila. But I want to share a story of, a, of an advocacy that just started this year. So I want to tell you a story. A little story. So in October 2016, I had the dream, as in literal na panaginan. So our tendency is that when we, when we dream, after two hours, nakakalimutan na natin yung dream natin. So anong ginawa ko? I was looking for something meaningful to do on January 2017. So what's January 2017? January 2017 happens to be my birth month. So gusto ko ng meaningful activity on my birthday. Parang pa Miss Universe, ganun. Pero something like that. So, I had the dream. So, sinulat ko yung, sinulat ko yung idea ko. I wrote it down. I, I was dreaming of me giving teddy bears to, to kids, the less fortunate kids. I also dream of me thinking of playing the violin for them and also teaching them the violin for free. So, I wrote it down and I conceptualized it. So, what I did is, uh, I collected, collected talaga. I gathered my group of friends and then we decided to conceptualize an activity for my birthday. So, and that, and that is the birth of Project Gifted. So, ito yung mga founding volunteers natin. Later on, we decided to turn it into an organization kasi we realized that it has potential to help more. Sa, hindi lang pala siya pwedeng tumigil lang sa birthday ko lang. I could, I could organize more events that could help more people. Hindi lang dun yung sa, na-limit dun sa community na tinulungan namin that day. So what is Project Gifted? Project Gifted is a group of people with the passion to use their God-given talents and gifts to help and inspire the less fortunate to develop their own. So, um, kaya gifted, kasi yung mga members yan, mga gifted people yung mga yan. They, they know how to play music, they have their talents, at the same time, they're intellectually gifted. Kasi we are utilizing the use of doctors so that they could use your skills and intellect to help others. And at the same time, ma-inspire nila yung mga bata na mag-aral din ng violin or ng talent nila or art or whatever or study well so that someday, these kids that they will inspire will be inspirations for themselves. So what we do? Here's our motto. We give. Give and share our talents and gifts to others deprived of what we have. We love. Love what we do to serve as a motivation and continuing doing good to, for others. And of course, inspire. Inspire others to also help and share what they have received. As you all know, blessings are meant to be shared. Project Gifted was founded in order to empower the less fortunate to rise up and develop themselves as future inspirations to the community and the society. Project Gifted aims to develop good citizens. So, ito yung methods ng Project Gifted. We usually do med missions. At the same time, we do children's parties and free workshops, music fest, and concerts. So, sinasabay-sabay namin siya. Habang nagpapacheck up si mommy at si daddy, may children's party si baby. At saka may music fest. Ano nyo ba, sa katunayan, even here in Cavite, when we went to, uh, to Barangay TV with the uh, medtech department, um, we, we, we were able to um, interview uh, uh, kids there na sinasabi nila na tinatanong ko sila, do you know how to play an instrument? Ganyan, ganyan. Hindi nila alam ko ano yung violin. They don't know kung ano yung mga certain instruments na sinasabi ko sa kanila. And this is Cavite. We're very near from Manila. And you, ex you, expect, you expect children to know these instruments. So by, by bringing these instruments or there's this kind of talent to the community, may inspire natin sila na to take up their own instrument and finally uh, use, the, use that talent to inspire others. At the same time, utilize that talent they have for livelihood. Kasi pwede naman nilang ituro yung matututunan nila. Like pwede sila magturo ng violin, pwede sila magturo ng art, depending on yung skill or gift na ma-acquire nila. So the teddy bear, it became the symbol of Project Gifted. Kasi alam naman natin, um, during, when, during our um, younger years, 
when we don't have someone or when our parents are away, we have our stuff toys. The less fortunate are, the, are not different from us kapag iniwanan tayo ng parents natin. So we decided to give them teddy bears. But at the same time, we decided to bundle it with, with school supplies tsaka ng bag. Kasi I, I still believe that the skills and the education is still the best gift that you can give to them. So, pag-iisipin natin, okay, music, anong, anong benefit niya yan? Sana nagbigay na lang tayo ng livelihood. Sana binigyan na lang natin siya ng livelihood package para kinamat yung buhay niya. Well, no, these methods will not directly economically lift the people that we meet, but rather transform them into better, better persons with additional skills and knowledge that will benefit them in the long run. Diba, at least yung community na yun, na-expose mo sila sa isang bagay na hindi nila ever magiging expose dahil sa situation nila. Makakapunta ba sila sa CCP? Makaka-attend ba sila ng mga art exhibits dahil sa situation nila? Hindi, di ba? Pero because that, because we, we, we brought these things to them, nakata nila to at naisip nila na, ay baka kaya ko din gawin yon. Bakit hindi din ako mag-aral ng ganun? Bakit hindi kaya ako mag-acquire din ng skills para maging katulad ako nila? So, ito yung mga activities namin. Pictures lang. So, nagme-medical mission, uh, children's party, uh, yun yung music fest. Yeah. Yeah, and we give out teddy bears in the end. Ito yung mga first beneficiaries namin. They're from SOS Philippines. Ito naman yung second, uh, second activity sa, dyan lang sa Barangay Inchikan. And also, we, we do a uh, fundraising concert in partnership with uh, Big Kids UPM in UP Manila. We, we raise funds for uh, patients with cleft, cleft palate uh, deformities. Also here, we went to the Missionaries of the Poor. Ito yung parang uh, home for the agent na mga, mga male home for the agent. So mga lolo lang din dyan at mga but um, my cerebral palsy. Also, we went with the Mentec Department to Barangay TV for their uh, community program. These are volunteers from the other med schools. So in just seven months, we managed to raise almost 100,000 pesos in kind and in cash. Kung isipin natin, uh, uh, malaki na yung 100,000 in just seven months. But this, this, is, uh, this was possible because of the uh, generous donors that we have. And we have, and we also have touched almost 400 plus lives. So for the sustainability, Project Gifted currently has five valid scholars. So hindi lang sila natatapos sa music fest lang. Hindi lang sila natatapos sa, sa, sa pa-concert lang. You do something for them. So we managed to raise funds for five valid scholars who will someday take the hem of Project Gifted para sila naman someday they pay back dun sa na-inspire sila dati. So this time, pag gumaling na sila, sila naman yung mag inspire And also, kung iisipin natin, the violin skills that they have acquired can be used for livelihood. Sige, they, they will not be able to finish schooling because of their status in life, because of their economic status. But they have this violin skill that they could use. Diba? Ano, ang isang, in, um, isang individual lesson ng violin, you can charge up to 150 pesos to 300 pesos. Malaki na yun sa kinikita nila, sa kinikita ng magulang nila sa pang-araw-araw. Sometimes, um, their parents, they only manage to uh, earn mga 200 pesos a day. Pero kung magtuturo yung bata na yun someday, ng tatlong sudyante kada araw, may 900 sila. Diba? So, we are already recognized by the United Nations and the Angat Buhay Youth under the office of the Vice President. So, for... So our partners, we are partnered with ABS-CBN, Berean Integrated School in IPA, of course, AUP College of Medicine, Angat Buhay Youth, and the UN SDS and Youth. So here are our potential partners then in the future, Youth for Mental Health, Bubu Bags, Yes, Pinoy Foundation, Kay Ding Dong Dantes, yan, malalam, just sharing. Yeah. Tapos in the UP Health Sciences and Pre-Med Society. So here are our affiliations, Angat Buhay Youth, and in the, in the United Nations SDSN Youth. Itong 
Uh, yan yung logo. So, you SDS and youth, uh, are you familiar with the sustainable developmental goals? The UN SDS and youth has this goal to um, meet the goals, SDS and youth. So, they utilize the youth org so that they, we could help UN to meet the goals. And achievements of the org, actually, isa pala achievement namin, we managed to uh, win the Angat Buha Youth Grant Competition. Uh, we were able to, we pitched in a project that will be funded by the office, uh, by the Angat Buhay, Angat Buhay Youth uh, Foundation. So we won uh, the top prize and Project Gifted will be going to Korea in November to compete to represent the Philippines sa Grand Competition. Thank you. Anyway, and one more thing is, in just seven months, Project Gifted gave birth to another advocacy. Ito yung pinanalo ng pitch, pinanalo namin na pitch na project. The Lipa City Youth Orchestra. So, ano yung Lipa City Youth Orchestra? Under Project Gifted, uh, we will utilize the out-of-school youth. We will teach them how to uh, play the instruments so that they could uh, veer away from mental health disorders. At the same time, malayo sila sa drug addiction, sa alcohol addiction. So, instead of doing those things, may hobby sila, habang out-of-school youth sila, they will utilize music as their way of elevating those things na try natin in-avoid. So, yun yun. So let's talk about you guys. I know each one of you right now in your mind as an advocacy na nakalagay dito. Lahat tayo may ideas. Kaya nga tayo nasa College of Medicine. Madami tayo iniisip. So we all want to help as medical professionals, as future professionals, whether medical or not, nas, at lalo na, lalo na as future alumni of AUP. We are geared we are being molded to serve. We all want to help. So, here are a few tips, a few steps in achieving your advocacy. So, step one, know your passion. So, may nagsabi dito kanina, gusto niyo yung passion niya is medicine. Passion niya, passion, baka passion din natin yung music. Passion natin tumulong sa iba. In my case, I'm a musician and I'm a, uh, and, and I'm a medical student. Uh, at the same time. So, passion ko yung something medical at the same time inclina with inclination sa, sa music. So, that is my passion. So, feeling ko kasi I'm good at that. Diba sabi nila, mas magaling tayo, we will perform better if we do the things that we love. So, unang-una, dapat alam natin kung ano ba tayo, kung saan ba tayo passionate. Malay natin. Kayo, passionate pala kayo sa baking, di ba? Pwede i-utilize yun. Magpa-bake tayo ng brownies, bigay natin sa mga may hira. Di ba? It's something, it's something, it's some, do you get, do you get my idea? Do you get the, the first step? Da? Know your passion first. Number two, know your target population. Sige, meron tayong brownies, pero yung area na pupuntahan natin, puro diabetic pala. So, paano yun? So, in vain din siya. So, you must know your target population. Kasi pagdating mo doon, hindi pala yun yung kailangan nila. Next is, know your allies. Kanina, I presented the partners and affiliations of Project Gifted. I knew my allies. And I knew my friends. That's why I invited my closest friends to join me in the establishing of this organization. Kasi hindi mo talaga kaya yan mag-isa. Lalo na if you want a a big scale project, hindi mo siya kaya mag-isa, hindi mo siya kaya na dalawa lang kayo. Kailangan marami kayo. Kailangan marami kang partners. Marami ka dapat allies. And you should know how to utilize them. That is why, you must know your capacities and capabilities. As a person, alam ko yung capabilities ko and capacities ko. And as a person, I know these are not enough. Pero, I knew my friends could do something else that I couldn't do. So I also have to know their, their capacities and capabilities. So with that, na-manage namin kung saan ilalagay si ganito, saan ilalagay si ganyan, para umanda rin organization. And number five, know your limits and sustainabilities. Itong word na to, nakita nyo yung kanina, sustainability. Bakit mahalaga ang sustainability? Kasi right now, in the Philippines, mahilig tayo mag-promote ng dole-out mentality. Papamed nation tayo, tapos ano na? papa-gift papa giving tayo tapos ano na anong impact niya one time one time big time impact lang ba siya 
o gusto natin ng impact na matagal, sustainable, na dapat mahalaga yung sustainability. So dapat, kapag gumagawa tayo ng project proposal, titingnan natin kung gaano katagal yung effect nung, nung thing na yun sa mga, sa mga tutulungan natin target population. At the same time, tulungan natin silang huwag maging dependent. Kasi sustainable nga, pero ikaw naman yung gawa ng gawa. For example, in Project Gifted, how is it sustainable? It's sustainable because we teach them uh, the skills that we want to teach them. And at the same time, pag wala na yung tumuro, nagturo sa kanila, sila naman yung magtuturo, and so on, and so on. Magko-continue organization, dadami sila. And of course, know your limits. Parang sa panliligaw lang yan. Pag hindi ka talaga gusto, tama na. Yeah. Okay? So, ganun din sa pagdating sa advocacies. Sometimes, tayo mga millennials, tayo mga millennials, we tend to be idealistic. Feeling natin, kaya natin gawing lahat. Lalo na na mas, ngayong, ngayong puro, puro, puro energy pa tayo. Feeling natin, kaya natin gawing lahat. Pero hindi yun totoo. So, you should know your limits. At you should know when to stop. Wala naman na tamaan doon. Of course, ito yung mga frequently asked questions on building an advocacy. Number one, student lang po ako, there is nothing I could do. That is false. Ngayong sudyante tayo, ito yung best time na para magkaroon tayo ng advocacy. Aminin natin, tayo mga medical students, oo, busy tayo, pero napakarami nating free time. Hindi lang natin siya ginagawa sa tama. Diba? Game of Thrones? <laughs> Isipin nyo, pagkatapos nyo ng klase ng 5pm, go home, take a bath, take your dinner, matatapos ka, mag-exercise ka, and 7pm, 5pm ka lumabas, 7pm tapos ka na sa lahat ng yun. Yung 7 to 8pm mo, why don't you utilize it to call your contacts, manage your resources, call your friends about your idea. O di na-utilize na natin yung one hour for our advocacy. And then the rest of the night, we could study. Ayun, so, uh, ngayon kasi, habang idealistic pa tayo, habang may energy pa tayo, being a student is the best time to build your advocacy. At lalo na sa school na tayo, kasi we are surrounded by our friends. Once professional life catches up to us, hindi na natin sila makakontak. I have an idea, but how do I execute it? One of the things that I learned in the Amat Buhay Youth Summit is that an idea remains an idea unless you execute it. So, idea lang yan. Ang ganda ng idea mo, o tapos, anong gagawin natin? So, how do I execute it? Sabi ko kanina, utilize, know your allies. Kasi yun nga, you cannot do it alone. Ikaw, medical student ka, pero meron kang friend na may mas maraming free time sa'yo, gamitin mo siya. Use your allies so that together, you could execute your plan. Para may nakagawa na yan, kailangan ko ata ng bago. In our country, there's a hundred million people. Natulungan ng Project Gifted, 400 pa lang. So, wala pa siyang 0.0001. Sobrang liit pa lang. But if you would like to make another uh, project that is similar to this, together, kaya nating tulungan yung 100 million na yun. So, wag mo sabihin na may nauna na. Huwag mo sabihin may nauna na Dahil ang dami pa dapat tulungan. So, kapag may nauna na, why don't you utilize that organization and ask him for help para together kayong tumulong sa mga tao with the same advocacy. May nagawa na ako, okay na yan. Pamed mission ako, pamigay ako ng bags, slippers, teddy bears, and feeding program. Go na yan, okay na yan. Again, remember, we are building advocacy to help others in the long run. We are not we are not building advocacy para lang bumango yung pangalan natin. When we build an advocacy, we have to be selfless. You have to think of others instead of yourself. So kung feeling mo na okay na yung ganyan, edi, bakit ka pa nagpa, bakit ka pa nag, why did you waste the time of your friends, of the community, if hindi mo pala sila uh, tutulungan yung dalong natin? Well, at the end of the day, in my conclusion, at the end of the day, it all goes down to our passion for service and our desire to help. Building an advocacy requires selflessness, removing the I 
and inserting the weed. So, we are fortunate enough to have our profession promote selflessness and the desire to help others in need. Diba tinuturo sa ating mga doktor? Ito. We need to help others. In, in, we need to help others talaga. Most especially, the others in need. Selfless na yung profession natin. Our profession is a selfless and noble profession. Use it to your advantage in building your advocacy. So in building an advocacy, it only takes one thing to start it all. It only takes passion. Passion for service, passion for helping others, and passion for change. All we have to do is that put that passion into action, remove, uh, be selfless by removing the eye, and you pass on to others. So, ayun, for question and queries, you can add me in Facebook. So, in love, thank you very much.